So we're going to paint with watercolor. And I know probably most people that have watched have used watercolors and they'll come in those sets where the paint is hard and you have to kind of wet it and get a little bit off. But these watercolor paints are actually a wet paint. Um, and the wet paints tend to be a little bit nicer, like a little bit brighter colors. Um, but what people will do when they first use them sometimes is use way too much. They'll kind of dip their brush in like it's acrylic paint and you really don't need very much. And so in this one, we've got white and black, which we're not gonna use at all. And we got purple, we're gonna stick away from purple. And then we've got red, yellow, and blue. And I wonder, do you know what, what colors, what you call red, yellow, and blue? As far as a set of colors, what you pair with yellow? What, what you call them, like they're those three colors in combination are well, the, primary, the colors. primary colors, right? So those are the primary colors, which means that every color, every other color you want, you can actually mix with those three. And one of the first exercises people do with um, primary colors when they're painting is they make what's called a color wheel. And a color wheel is a way to kind of see how the different colors mix. And so to start with here, I'm gonna give you a pencil and each of us, let's draw a triangle. Just kind of lightly draw a triangle on our piece of paper. Draw. All right, great. And so with our paintbrushes and paints, we're gonna put a circle of each of the colors on each of the points of the triangle. And so with watercolor, you just, you don't need much of the color. We have this palette we can share. You know, you can put a little bit of the red in there with some water and that should be more than enough for me to make my red circle. See, it's kind of a crimson -y red, huh? Hmm. Interesting. And then you'd wash it off a little bit. And before you go into another color, you wanna kinda make sure your brush is dry. So you can go ahead with the red too. And then, I don't need very much. So even though this looks like a really small paint set, it'll last a really long time. And our water's a little dirty, but that's okay. Water looks dirtier than it is sometimes when you're doing paint stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the yellow. The yellow being the lightest of the colors, it's the most important to wash your brush before you use yellow. Mm -hmm. Yellow and white, when you put a dirty brush into them, they get really gross really quick. See if I had a yellow circle. I look a little bit like a clown reason. Maybe I just have clowns on the brain. Don't commit now. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of blue in this one. So now, it's almost as though we're doing another triangle inside of it, you, I want you to think of there's going to be a spot, and you don't even have to draw it on there, you just have to be able to imagine it, but there's going to be a spot that's between yellow and blue, and there's a spot that's between red and blue, and there's a spot that's kind of halfway between those two. And again, it would make another triangle if you wanted it to, but if you connect them this way, you get something a little bit more like a circle, right? Or an oval. And that's that's the wheel. When we're talking about a color wheel, that's why we call it a wheel is because it goes in circles. Now, we're going to just one at a time connect or like fill in these circles. Maybe we will start with, um, let's start with the one between yellow and blue. So let's combine our yellow and blue paint. And what I would imagine, the best thing to do is to start with the lighter color. So make sure you have a fair amount of the lighter color in your dish. 
and then you only need to add the teeniest bit of the darker color. It takes very little blue to turn yellow into green. If you if you add um, yellow to blue, you'll end up putting all your yellow into your blue and it'll all be gone and you still won't have green. So you just gotta think you need lots of the lighter color and not very much of the darker color to get um, to mix. So that's the same thing with white. If you wanna make gray, you take your white and you add black to it. You don't take your black and you add white to it. Um, I don't actually know exactly why that is. What well, we, we figured out, right? Yellow and blue make green. All right, there you go. So then yellow and red, when we combine them, they will make, and I've already got the red there, so, uh-oh, I'm supposed to have the yellow first and add the red to it second, but let's try to get just a little bit of that red in there. We should still maybe be able to make an orange. Let's see if that's a good orange. I'm gonna maybe need a little more red. He's a bit more red. Gonna make it so it's just red. Or is it an orange? A lot of orange. <laughs> oh, it's it's a good orange. That's orange. Or it's more. It's actually kind of like my red. I'm gonna get more yellow in a second. Yes. You can always change things around, right? And the cool thing with watercolors is, if you re-wet it, you can get it to come back up off the um, the paper. You can mix new colors. Oh, there we go. That's. There's such a thing as a hunter orange. Hunter orange, yeah, you got a nice kind of huntery orange. See, so you can kind of still mix it while it's wet hmm. on the paper. And so this red that we started with was a little bit kind of orange. It's probably a crimson red, which crimson has a little bit of an orange tint to it. So now we know that red and yellow combine to make orange. Um, all right, let's do the last one. I'm gonna go first, right. we're adding red to blue. So I got some that. Well, let's pretend this is on, this is gray. Uh-oh, <laughs> it's okay. This happens. Well, for the sake of argument, this is on, and this is Yeah, like so Eleanor is doing a great job making sure that her brush is clean before she dips it into the paint again. And that's how you end up not having a lot of brown paint. <laughs> I mean, nothing wrong with brown, but there's only so many things you can paint with brown. Ooh, yeah. No. We got something like a purple. This is going to be kind of a brownie purple because of the, um, because the red is a little bit orangey, but that's okay. That's one of the reasons why purple is a hard one to mix. That's why we put a little bit of purple in the mm. in the thing because the green, orange is really easy to mix for some reason. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna need more blue too. But... Wow, so purple. <laughs> <laughs> but believe us, when you mix blue and red, you you usually get purple. I think what the problem is is that um, when Paints aren't pure colors, right? And so some reds are a little bit orange. And if a red's a little bit orange, then you're inadvertently or without trying, you're adding some yellow to your blue and your red. And so you get what happens when you mix all three of your colors, which we're kind of just skipping ahead, right? So um, if you add blue, yellow, and red together, Oh yeah, that looks great. Um, if you add blue, yellow, and red together, let's see if we were just to take all of our colors here and just disobey the rules and mix them all together, uh, you end up with some shade of brown. Yeah, see, so this is, the center of your wheel is always some shade of brown. Uh -huh. um, and that's where black paint is kind of important because it's really hard actually to mix black. Um, but blacks do have, they do have a tint. Blacks are either a little bit cool, like bluish green, or they're a little bit warm, reddish orange, um, if you look at them. Anyway, this, these are our color wheels. Whoop. Success. And if you wanted to get even crazier, you could try to make like a, 
yellowy green or a greeny yellow or you know mm. and add in the other colors because like as we were saying these three the blue red and yellow those are our primary colors and green purple and orange those are what we call secondary colors and so there's also you can put dots along your wheel that are your tertiary colors or the three i think that means so you clean your stuff up and use it again later maybe we'll make sure we close our lids yeah, the yellow is always gets dirty the quickest. Hmm. There's no, no saving the yellow. <laughs> Take the sun. <laughs> Perfect. So that's a pretty simple project. And what can be fun to do afterwards too, is you take this and just use it as the beginning of a painting. Those could all be planets or something. Or, mm -hmm. Again, it makes me think of a clown for some reason. Spot on a clown. Do it, make it happen. Make it to turn into a clown. Let's see. You need a small brush. The watercolor, the paper is usually strong enough that if you, here, watch this. Don't, don't do this at home, right? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh, God. If, if you get a lot of water on your page, um, see how the paints, they don't dry permanently. But if you get a lot of water on your page and then you add colors to it, you know, a brush, let's try adding a little bit of blue it'll spread in the in the water right really easily really fast and you can create kind of washes and stuff see how it's following the water around making a huge mess Very cool stuff you can also put salt on it hmm. creates patterns put salt on it yeah what does it do it the salt absorbs the water and it creates patterns where where the salt crystal is is kind of the white of the paper and around it it's the darkest of the colors. Huh. Yeah, but so yeah, again, you can like kind of mix in the watercolor, you can kind of mix in stuff until it's something closer to you want. You can also, if you put saran wrap down on it, squished up, it creates cool patterns. And see, look at how you can even use Watercolors are so fun. You can even use your paper towel to, or, or a little rag or something to clean up edges and bring the white of the paper back in. Mm. Let's see. Oh yeah, perfect. Beautiful. We got, we're doing so good. We got our, our clowns and our rainbows. <laughs> if we could just combine the two. Mm -hmm. um, all right, there we go. That was, that was nice art lesson time. Close our paints. Get a big red nose. And we'll come, we'll work on these again tomorrow. <laughs>